Hello, my name is Daniel. Today we're reading Quill Soup by Alan Durant and Del Blancanar. So get comfy and I'll begin. Nocco the porcupine was hungry and tired. He'd been travelling through the valley of a thousand hills and hadn't eaten for days. He saw a small village ahead and his spirits lifted. Food and shelter at last, he thought. Meanwhile, in the village, the animals caught sight of Nocco. There's a stranger coming, squeaked Monkey. Quick, run to your homes, shouted Meerkat. Nocco trudged into the village. It was silent and empty. Hello, friends, he called, but there was no reply. Nocco went to the first house and tapped on the door. Yes, said Warthog. I've travelled a long way and I'm very hungry, said Nocco. Do you have anything I can eat? Warthog shook her big head. I'm sorry, she replied. I ate a big lunch and all my food is gone. Nocco knocked at the next house. How can I help? asked Rabbit. Please, I need some food, said Nocco. So do I, Rabbit exclaimed. My greedy brother came to visit and ate all my food. I have nothing left. Nocco knocked at Monkey's door. Yes, what is it? Monkey asked. I wonder if you have any food to spare, a poor traveller? Nocco inquired. We are poor villagers, Monkey grumbled. We don't have any spare food. So Nocco went to Aardvark's house. And Meerkat's house. And Pangolin's house. But he came away hungry. None of them, they said, had any food. But this time, Nocco was very tired and very hungry indeed. But his brain was as sharp as the quills on his back. He could see from the villagers' sleek coats and rounded bellies that they were lying. He knew they had food, but how was he going to get some? He sat and thought, and after a while, he came up with a plan. I wonder if I might have a little fire and a large pot of water, he asked the villagers. Of course, they replied, they couldn't refuse him that. Nocco put the pot on the fire to boil. It seems I shall have to make my own food, he sighed. I shall make quill soup. He plucked three quills from his back and dropped them into the pot. But surely the quills are too hard and sharp to eat, Warthog said. Wait and see. Soon they will soften and release their flavour to make a delicious soup, Nocco explained. He bent over the pot and dipped in his paw. Then he licked it and nodded. Mmm, tasty! he said. Just how his majesty likes it. You've met the king, squeaked Meerkat. Many times, said Nocco casually. I always make him quill soup. He loves it. Nocco tasted the soup again. If only I had some carrots, he said ruefully. Rabbit's ears shot up. He wanted to taste the quill soup that was fit for a king. I think my greedy brother may have left a carrot or two, he blurted out, and he hopped away to fetch them. Nocco added the carrots to the water and tasted the soup again. Lovely, he announced. Of course the king likes uh, mealies in his quill soup. I've got mealies, squeaked Meerkat, and she ran away to find them. 
Each time Nocco tasted the soup, there was something that needed to be added. Beans, peas, potatoes, spinach. In moments, as if by magic, all of these things appeared. Now Nocco's soup was thick and rich. Once again he tasted it. Perfect, he declared. Unless I don't suppose anyone has a few worms. Pangolin did. Nocco told the villagers to fetch their bowls. There's plenty of soup to share, he said. And share they did. They drank bowl after bowl of the delicious soup in the firelight until the big pot was empty. Nocco sat back, looked up at the stars and yawned. I wonder if you might have a hole where I could sleep, he asked. A hole, cried Monkey, for our friend who has cooked delicious quill soup for the king and who has the generosity to share it with strangers, piped Aardvark. No, my friend, said Monkey, you, Nocco, shall have the very best bed in my house. You're too kind, Nocco smiled. Before they went to bed, Nocco and the villagers sang together, shared stories and danced in the moonlight. And later, with a full tummy and a happy heart, Nocco the Traveller went to sleep at last. Thanks for listening. See you next time.